Close your eyes. Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths. And notice where you feel the breathing in the body. We're talking about the breath here. It's not so much the air coming in and out through the nose. It's more the movement of energy in the body. As you breathe in, as you breathe out. And where is that most prominent? Focus your attention there. And then ask yourself, is it comfortable? If long breathing feels good, keep it up. If not, you can change. Make it shorter, faster, deeper, more shallow, heavier, lighter. Ask yourself, what kind of breathing would the body like right now? See how it responds. And then it's just a matter of doing this again and again and again. You're setting up an intention. And you'll see that other intentions will come in, but you have to hold to that first intention that you're going to stay right here with the breath. And you help that intention by making sure the breath feels good, feels really gratifying for the energy to come in, saturate the torso, saturate your arms and legs, all through the head. It feels good deep down inside. That's the kind of breathing you want. That enables you to maintain that intention. Because we're here to learn about our intentions. And the best way to do that is to set up one intention and then see how it falls apart. And then pick up the pieces and see if you can hold it together again a little bit better the next time. Because other intentions will come in. And the mind has a tendency to hop trains. It's like a hobo. It's riding on one train, another train comes along, you hop over. And then another train, you hop over. You end up who knows where. And if you were to ask, what were your trains of thought in the meantime, often it's hard to trace them. But if you set up one intention, and then when there's an impulse to go someplace else, okay, you notice that. And even if you do slip off, you know where you're supposed to go back, so you don't go far. And so you understand the power of intention in your mind. And you want to be able to see that not only while you're sitting here meditating, but also as you go through the day. This is why when Ajahn Swat was asked after teaching a meditation retreat one time, how do you bring meditation into daily life? He said, start with the five precepts. The person who organized the retreat was upset. He thought that Ajahn Swat was saying that lay people can't manage meditation in daily life. But that's not what he was saying. If you hold by the five precepts, you're creating the right environment for the meditation. Because what are the precepts about? They're about your intentional actions. You intend not to kill. You intend not to steal, not to have illicit sex, not to lie, not to take intoxicants. Your intention is important here, so you try to maintain those intentions. And as you do that, you develop the qualities you're going to need for the meditation. You have to be mindful. You have to keep them in mind. You have to be alert to make sure that your actions don't go against the precepts. And you have to be ardent in doing this well. Because it's not always easy to hold to the precepts. Sometimes you have to make other sacrifices. As the Buddha said, there are two kinds of loss that are really serious. Loss of right view and loss of the precepts. There's other kinds of loss that are not so serious. Loss of health, loss of relatives, loss of, m of monetary, monetary wealth. Because those things are going to leave you anyhow. Your health will leave you someday. Your relatives will leave you someday. Your, mo your money is going to leave you someday. But your precepts and your right view don't have to leave you. You're the one who abandons them. And when you abandon them, that's a serious loss. We would also point out that these two qualities, right view and holding purely to the precepts, provide the right, con the right context for mindfulness practice and from mindfulness into concentration. As I said, you develop the good qualities in mind that are needed for mindfulness, ardency, alertness, mindfulness. And you also create a, a life in which you are not harming anybody. You're not harming yourself, you're not harming other people. In other words, you're not leaving scars on your mind. When there are scars, it's very difficult to settle down on scar tissue. But if you can look back and say, I haven't harmed anybody today, I haven't harmed anybody for the past week, it's a lot easier for your mindfulness to stretch out. So you can't keep things in mind for long periods of time. So when the Buddha talks about the precepts, it's not just 
rules for good little boys and good little girls. They're an important part of the meditation, an important part of training the mind. So make sure that you hold them, by, hold by them, <coughs> day by day by day. And that way you have the right context, you have the right environment for the meditation to progress. <coughs>